What's up, guys? It's fucking Friday. How are you? It's been a crazy week, well, at least on my front. I hope that your week has been better than mine, but if it hasn't, you know, sorry about your damn luck. But either way, we're going to have some fun. It's Friday. Let's have some fun with some new music and a new band that I've never had on the show before. So let's just get right to it right fucking now. Otherwise, we'll miss the fireworks. There won't be any fireworks. And here we go. And welcome, everybody, to Suck It. I am the great and powerful King of Kings, Prince of all that is awesome, Derek. How the fuck are you doing today on this beautiful May 21st of the year? That is 2021. I hope, again, your week was a good one. Had some strange shit going on in the world, but what else is fucking new? You know, but that happens every fucking day. So I hope, you know, you're getting through it, and I hope that you're keeping your head held high because that's all we can really do, right? Can't let the demons win. And by the demons, I mean, like, the assholes at the fucking store who still want to fight about masks and everybody else in between. Screw them. But anyway, today I got a new band for, um, new band for you guys um, off of Wiretap Records. Uh, they are out of Austin, excuse me, San Antonio, San Antonio, Texas, not Austin. If I said that, they'd probably get mad. Uh, <laughs> San Antonio, Texas, called Love Again. Um, they just released a new single. It's a cover. Um, we'll get to all that and more today with the band Love Again. Hey, what's going on, man? How are you? I'm doing good, man. How are you doing? You know what? I could not be better. Awesome. Same, same. You it's, know? Been a, it's been a decent week. It's been a decent week. I mean, it's just yeah. one of those things where, you know. I could complain, but I won't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, that's yeah, just how it goes. Too, but, you know, it could be worse. It could be worse. It could always be worse. That's true. So how's things going for you, man? Um, They're going pretty great, man. We released that cover last week, and it's got some pretty good reception so far. So as far as that goes, it's going pretty well. Um, what was the idea behind, you know, cause I've talked to a lot of different bands and I've asked this question because a lot of bands have done what you're doing right now and releasing covers during the pandemic. Um, why did you guys decide to do it? Um, well, I've been wanting to do that cover for probably a little over two, three years. Like before I started the band, I already, like the band took a few years to get together and start to get everything going. And I just just have so many ideas going on in my head you know and i thought it would be cool to do like acoustic covers of old punk pop punk songs and for some reason that one came to mind i don't remember exactly why because it was so long ago but i just love that song and i thought it would be cool to try to make it more of like an emo style type of song so i just started messing with it and i was like oh shit, this sounds pretty cool and i never got around to doing it and then Right now, we haven't been doing much as far as, like, recording, or we haven't even played a show yet, which is crazy. But I was like, well, fuck it. Might as well do this cover now and try to get it out before the 16th. And luckily, we were able to do that. So I'm pretty happy about that. And it came out pretty pretty good, I think. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, I mean, I listened to it today. It sounds fantastic. Um, not, what I, not what I expected. Um, you, you definitely... Uh, you definitely pulled that emo, you know, theme off. 
Um, it was just, you know, it just kind of caught me off guard, but I was like, it was, it was really hauntingly beautiful. You know what I mean? It, it just kind of had this <sighs> genesis qua about it, for lack of a fucking better term. <laughs> I hate, fucking hate that term. <laughs> but, I mean, it really did. It just kind of, it kind of popped. It really just kind of gave a whole new meaning to the, the song. Um, yeah. And I love that kind of stuff, you, you know, because I wouldn't really call this a cover. Um, cause right now, like, you know, when bands do this kind of thing right now, the new word is reimagining. Um, <laughs> and, and I definitely think that falls into a reimagining category because, you know, you can just do a karaoke cover song, but you guys obviously didn't go that route with this. You guys definitely reimagined it and to be something completely different. Um, and I dig that because again, it gives you an opportunity to really listen to the words in a different way and, you know, hear them like go, oh shit. Okay. That's really, really cool. Because like, for example, a couple years back, five finger death punch covered offspring's gone away and they did it slow, melodic, very creepy and stuff like that. And you got a chance to listen to a song in a completely different way. And it kind of gave you a whole new outlook on the song. And I think you guys definitely did that exact same thing with this one. Thank you. Yeah. I've, I've never heard, I've never heard that cover, but I, I assume, I assume that it would sound pretty, for the lack of a better way of saying it, fucking depressing. <laughs> I mean, those, those lyrics are pretty dark, you know? Yeah. The gone away lyrics are very, very dark. Um, yeah. You know, you know, for the longest time, I never really listened to the, that song. You know, I knew the lyrics to the song, mm -hmm. you know, but to know that I was talking about death and going to somebody's grave and stuff like that. Like I always knew that, but I didn't know that. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then yeah. to hear it the way that they did it was like, holy shit. I am not a five finger fan in any which way, shape or form. I do not like them <laughs> at all. I, I like real metal, um, but that's shoot me. Um, I'm going to get some fucking hate mail for that one. But that's... Yeah, I wouldn't know that. <laughs> now, I will say this. I've seen them in concert. They do put on a great fucking show. However, that's where the line ends. But, uh, you know, when you can do that kind of stuff and really kind of open your eyes to the song in a different way and make people bring, you know, bring ears to your sound and... Even the the way the original song was written, and go, oh, I never heard this song before. Let me go back and listen to the original. You kind of do you know justice to both things, and I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, thank you, man. Yeah, um, so yeah, when I had that idea to do that, that was definitely what I was trying to do was do something different with it. You know, um, two bands that I really like that are emo bands that kind of got me into wanting to make this band or. American football and into it over it. And they have those like a lot of picky guitar stuff. And I was like, well, I kind of want to do that with this song. So that's where I started with that. And yeah, when I first heard that song, I heard it from Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2 as a child. And like, oh my God, you're and, right. Yeah, it has this like, it has a, it's in like a, it has like a happy vibe to it. But when I started working on the cover and really like paying more attention, like I knew the lyrics, you know. But when I paid more attention to the lyrics, it was like, oh, this song's kind of fucking sad, you know? It's about being alone, you know? So it does have more of a somber quality to it when you slow it down and make it the way that I made it. Like, yeah, it totally has a different vibe. Yeah, and it, like I said, it really it caught me off guard because I wasn't expecting it that way. And, you know, because I had heard the song before and I completely forgot it was on Tony Hawk Pro Skater. Um, but it just, like I said, it just kind of made me rethink the, the, you know, how it song, you know, how it sounds and what it really meant. And I was like, okay, that hit me right in the feels. Um, <laughs> because I mean, it's a dark song. It's a sad song. And, you know, it's definitely fitting, you know, for that song to come out now that you guys put it out now, um, in the middle of mental health awareness month. Um, so, you know, because that's what the show is all about. I mean, where music and mental health meet. And when I can find bands that, you know, do that already, it's like, oh, perfect. You know, it's, you know, whether that was the intention or not, you know, it it, it hit that same way. Because like, oh, shit, this is the perfect song for this to come out now. And that's one of the things that I, you know, definitely felt when I heard it. 
Yeah, I think that was somewhat my intention, man. Whenever I started working on it, I was going through a lot of shit. And um, at the time, I felt like I had a dog. She passed away not too long ago. Well, it was my family's dog. And she was with me that whole time. And I kind of, that song reminds me of that dog. So rest in peace to her. But yeah, I definitely see that. Um. It's funny that you mentioned that because I had a, a cat who passed away on me not too long ago as well. Um, yeah, and the thing that sucks, I only had her for like a year. Um, we, excuse me, him for a year. We don't know what happened. Um, it was just a, kind of like a spontaneous thing. He just passed away. Um, and he passed away in my arms as I was trying to get him to the vet. Um, and that is and that is something that, you know, most people just don't understand. You know, if, they, if you're not a pet owner, you know, those things, you know, that hurts. I mean, that is a family member, especially that cat to me. Cause I got him last year for my birthday and he passed away just before my birthday this year. And, you know, I'm going through a divorce and all this other stuff right now. So it's like, that was like my boy, that was my, my, yeah. you know, my everything. And then boom, he was gone. So yeah, I can definitely understand why this song means that much to you in this way. Yeah, man. it was, uh, it was tough, man. I was in a class on that, and when I found out, and I was just, I was devastated. But, you know, she lived a long, good life. She was like, man, maybe more than 13 years old. She was a great dog, too. That's good, man. Um, I have four other animals that live with me right now. I'm like the 40-year-old man that's single that just hoards animals now. <laughs> what do you um, have? I have two other dogs and two cats now. Cool, cool, cool. Um, I just got the other cat. Um, cause after, cause I had another cat, you know, before I got him, uh, mm -hmm. she's like, she'll be three this year. And, um, they were so tightly bonded. And when he passed away, she was just really, really, yeah. And, um, so coincidentally enough on my birthday, my friend had, um, posted on her Facebook that she was fostering a cat and, Look completely different from my cat. However, uh, he she's all white, but has this one patch of fur that looks exactly like his. Oh, and I sick. immediately texted her and I said, I want him. And she goes, <laughs> he's yours. So I got her like three weeks ago. And, you know, my I can see my other cat starting to uh, get a little happier. They're playing around together. They're getting to get along. And it's just... It's it's been really nice. I mean, I miss my cat. I mean, I'm, I love my cat so fucking much that I got his. You know, I got a hold on. I can can't even sh fucking show it, but I got a, a tattoo of him on my arm. That um, looks pretty sick. I can't see it, but that looks really fucking. Yeah, I good. mean, oh, there it goes. That's better. Oh, dude, damn, that's wild. That's yeah, better. So I got a, a yeah, I got a, a memorial tattoo on him and stuff like that. Because I mean, like I said, I love that fucking guy. He was such a fucking good cat. But the new cat, not a replacement. Um, just an addition, and you know she's definitely yeah. making me miss him less, which is good. Oh yeah. So I'm getting all teary eyed now, man. What the fuck did you do to me? <laughs> My bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, the the thing that sucked the most was the day that that happened. I had to do a podcast, and I fucking broke down because I do this. I, I do this show five days a week, and sometimes I'll do four or five episodes a day just to because you know because of schedules and stuff like that. And yeah. that happened right in the middle of all this. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> it was not a fun day for me. Not at all. Um, so, anyway, on to some more fun stuff. Um, all right. So, especially places like Texas, you know, are fully reopened. Uh, Florida, Mississippi, a lot of other places. Uh, we are in Virginia. We're almost to that point. Um, like, really fucking close we just removed our mask mandate this past weekend and you know uh -huh. things are slowly starting to open back up so what is the plan for you guys to get out there and start playing shows again um man i honestly don't know how long it's gonna take we um for the ep that we put out there's like a lot of like synths and pianos and stuff like that so we're trying to get all the equipment for backtracks and stuff like that and that's pretty fucking expensive but we've got like I would say 75% of it. We're still trying to get the rest. So honestly, I have no idea. We've been practicing like every week to make sure that we're tight once we get to that point. 
And it kind of sucks because we've been a band for like a year now. And there's been a few people that like ask you, ask us, hey, when are, when are y'all going to play? We're like trying to do it. And it's, oh man, it's probably not going to be too soon. Hopefully we can though. I think maybe we could get away with playing our stuff without the backtracks. We don't necessarily need it, but it would definitely make it sound better. Um, our drummer, Alex, he's my roommate. He brought this up the other day that maybe I should start doing some acoustic shows before we get to that point. So that's something that I'm thinking about too. Hopefully oh, yeah. Soon in there. Yeah, that acoustic stuff is, you know, makes you, you know, it gives a, you know, especially when you do it live. I mean, the the crowd is into it more, I think. You know, sometimes. I, I think it kind of, because it's more intimate. Like, um... Here, here's a prime example of that. So I've seen Slipknot five times in concert. And years ago, before I moved to Florida, we speak before I moved from Florida to Virginia, I saw Corey Taylor do one of his, you know, spoken word, acoustic, you know, single solo sets. Um, and the crowd was only maybe a thousand people. Not, you know, not nearly as large as a regular Slipknot show, obviously, because he does small stages, clubs and stuff like that for this stuff on purpose. But when he was up there doing acoustic, you know, Slipknot songs and acoustic Stone Sour songs and even stuff that he wrote on his own, the energy in the room was a lot more uncontrollable. Yeah, I mean, it was just like you could feel everything. He could feel everything. I mean, he's up there crying and talking about the loss of the, the bassist and everything else like that. I mean, he's you don't get that in a regular Slipknot show. You don't get that in a regular Stone Sour show. Um, so, you know, I like that idea. Cause that, I mean, like, again, it gives a different perspective on who you guys are as a band. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I'm thinking about possibly doing that. Uh, other than that, man, yeah, we're trying to our best to get all the rest of the equipment ready to go. Hopefully by the, before the end of the year, we know we want to go on tour for sure next summer. So that's, that's definitely going to be something that we do for sure. Um, other than that, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much it, man. It kind of sucks. I wish I could stay sooner than later, but yeah, probably, probably not till hopefully the end of this year. Man. We'll see how that goes. But yeah, funny, like funny random ass story about acoustic shows. Our other band that we have together, we haven't done much in a while, but we got to play an acoustic set opening up for Aaron Gillespie from Under Oath a few years ago, maybe like 2016. And during his set, the crowd was talking pretty loudly and he, he got pretty pissed about it, man. And he stopped like in the middle of the song and like basically gave a lecture to the crowd. Oh my God. <laughs> and it was, so, it was so awkward, man. Cause I was sitting at the merch table and it happened and I was just like, oh, oh shit, okay. <laughs> Yeah, and under oath, you know they're 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 reaching that you know legendary status. Um, yeah, they've yeah. been around for a long time. That's that's a little. I mean, I can understand where he's coming from, but it's a little disrespectful. But same time, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah that's kind of odd. I, I would have loved to see <laughs> that, to be honest with you. <laughs> I got to talk to him for like two minutes right after we played our set went outside to smoke a cigarette and he asked me for my lighter and I was like, Oh, cool. Here you go, dude. It was, it was pretty, it was pretty random, but yeah, that was a good show. Sounds like it. Damn. Um, so how have you guys, you know, you know, managed the pandemic as a group? Um, you know, it's been, it's obviously been a weird, weird, weird year, um, for music entertainment comedy the whole nine yards um and not even just that i mean businesses and everything else like that but on the entertainment side it's definitely a bit odd because you know while some people can still work from home obviously musicians can as well but one of the things we can't do from home is live shows yes we can do a virtual stream that's not up for debate but nothing is like being up on stage you know i've done countless zoom comedy shows 
and they just don't hit the same. I mean, sometimes the microphone is off, so you don't get all the laughter. You know, sometimes their camera is off, so you can't see who they are. You know, not the same. And as far as you guys go, some, m most of the time if you're playing a virtual show, you're just looking at a wall or whatever, <laughs> looking at the camera, and that's really all you're doing. It's no different than playing a, you know, making a music video. Um, what have you, you know, it's, especially being fans of music, you know, what have you guys been thinking this whole time? And how have you guys really kind of said, we need to make sure that we're still out in front of our fans. We need to do this. We need to make sure that we're making a name for yourself, especially since it's only been a year. Um, you know, so what exactly have you been trying to do to say, hey, this is who we are, where this is what we're doing, and we want to make sure that you guys know about us. Or don't forget Just us. Doing a lot of content, really, man. Before we, you know, announced the band and started, like, putting stuff out there, we recorded two singles. We had already had the music videos ready to go, and we were just kind of waiting for the right time to do it. And then once everything happened, we were like, well, fuck it. Why, why not just do it now? So we released the first single and that got some decent attention. We did a lot of work to try to do that. And then we ended up getting signed, which is fucking stupid. But I mean, it's badass. <laughs> it's just crazy to yeah. think about, you know, getting signed without even playing a show or touring. It's pretty fucking wild. But hey, I'm happy about it. So that happened, and then once we got on the label, we already had that second single and video ready to go. So we put that out. In between all that, I was just doing covers at home because I was stuck at home the whole time. So I was just doing covers and putting that on Instagram, Facebook, and all that good stuff. And then after that, we had already been recording the EP. So we finished up the EP during that. We did a couple music videos for that too, put that out. Um, and then we did like a live like session type thing with this one guy recorded the thing we did like the first single we put out that's the only one we did and that was kind of weird it was it was fun but it was super weird doing that I mean it was cool though it was it was nice to do that and then around Christmas time I did like a live acoustic uh, what do you call it a live feed or what do you what's live the word? stream live stream there you go fuck how come i <laughs> <laughs> yeah i did a live stream and that was Sound like an old fun. man what's that right. called again <laughs> <laughs> yeah <it's... laughs> yeah i did that actually i did another live stream on uh some facebook channel ghost killer entertainment i did that yeah just things like that dude just putting out content really and i wish we could do shows right now because they're starting to already come back up. Yeah. I mean, over the last month, I mean, the amount of shows that's been announced, it's been crazy. Um, yeah. And they're selling out so fast. I mean, some of them aren't even announcing all the bands and they're selling out. You know, yeah, like wow. here in Virginia, we have, you know, another Danny Wimmer Festival, you know, uh, Blue Ridge Fest. And then down in Florida, they've got, the fest and then also they have um welcome to rockville and then also like uh what else has been Burns announced fest. yep um then what's the other one uh incarceration which is in kentucky and then louder than life just got announced which is in kentucky as well um i know lollapalooza already got announced yeah lollapalooza um i mean there's just been so much stuff it just all, all came out at once and said, hey, guess what? what? Music's back. Let's fucking do this. Yeah, um, yeah. Which is phenomenal. F fucking nominal. It's, you know, it's fantastic. You know, um, the one I'm thing that... Fest, man, but we'll say, see. Say again? I'm hoping to go to Furnace Fest. We'll see what happens with that. Yeah. Did, um, are they doing uh, South by Southwest this year? No, they did. Uh, they did all virtual stuff. Because my brother does I remember like that, a, but I wasn't sure if they were going to do another one later this year. I don't think so. Not that I'm aware of. Yeah, they did They did it all virtual because my brother was like, yeah, they, they just mailed us some cheeses, and we're going to do a cheese tasting online through a Zoom call. And I was like, oh, okay, that's interesting. What? <laughs> yeah, because I, I, I guess they do food, too. You know, they do music, movies. Yeah. And I guess well, so. I didn't know the food thing. I know they did music, movies, and comedy, but I didn't know the food thing. That's interesting. Because yeah, I went one year, and it was fantastic. Um, I saw another uh, – San, is it San Antonio they're from? 
Um, another San Antonio band, uh, Nothing More, while I was there. Okay, yeah, yeah, I've heard of that band. Yeah, they're good. Um, one of my favorites, actually. Um, not in the same genre as you guys, but definitely a, 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 a fucking sweet-ass band. Um, but uh, it's, again, it, it's so nice to be able to see that kind of stuff getting ready to come back out again and stuff like that. I mean, I'm, I'm ready to go hit the stage and start doing comedy again, but D.C. is not exactly quite open yet, and there's nothing in Northern Virginia, unfortunately. <laughs> so I'm waiting for that, but... You know, have you done anything like? Have you done anything online? Is that? I've done I've done a bunch of Zoom comedy shows. Yeah, is it is it is it weird or? It's oh my god, it's so weird. So like most of them, all the ones that I've done at least will show you the cameras of all the different people. Yeah. So it's that's odd in itself because when you're up on stage and you have all these lights in front of you, you can barely see the faces of the people in the crowd. Um. But to be able to see them live sitting from their fucking recliner on their phone or, you know, they're watching on a TV and you can see them, whatever. It's just weird. But the fact that, like, you can actually see, like, who they are. Like, I have this one really, really bad, I mean, talking, it's a bad joke. It's one of those jokes where I don't want people to laugh. I just kind of want them to go, oh, my God, Derek, what's wrong with you? And I knew that joke was coming up. And um, there's this little... 80 year old couple probably married for 50 fucking years and i'm like oh my god i'm about to tell this joke in front of these people <laughs> and i'm sitting there building up to it and in the back of my head i'm like don't do it don't do it don't do it and it came out and i was like oh fuck i said it <laughs> and, uh, they got this this look of first it was a look of horror but then they started busting out laughing and i was like yes coolest fucking people ever um like yeah it it was yeah (laughs) but um that happened quite a few times um but then at the same time you stop doing your normal set and you just start bullshitting with you know the other comics and you start doing this or saying this and you're just randomly shouting things out just to see what sticks it almost becomes like an open mic um but it's it like it just didn't hit the same, never hit the same. I, I got a little bit more ballsy than I normally would have, um, which was a little bit weird uh, considering my normal type of comedy, very, very dark normally. But I got a little bit more ballsy because like, oh, I can't get talk shit to after the show. I can just turn my fucking computer off and be walk away. Um, you, think that would, uh, you think that'll change how you do it live? You think it'll make you more ballsy when you go back to doing it on stage? Oh, yeah. Some of the things I've written down, because I, I, in my phone I have this uh, just this log book of things that I just say randomly, just you know, and I'm like, oh my god, that would make such a good joke, um, and I would just start, you know, putting it down, and I would talk about it, and like, okay, cool, and then I would, you know, try to start phrasing it into a joke, and you know, maybe make a comment to somebody randomly, and then see if they even understood it or you know laughed about it in any which way, shape, or form. Um, yeah, I mean, I have countless different things that I normally would never have said ever. Um, but I think the pandemic is part of that. It's not just the fact that I haven't been able to perform on stage. It's I think it has a lot to do with the fact that I've seen so much bullshit over the last year, whether it be the, the crazy Karens or the crazy Chads or Kyles, whatever the fuck you want to call them. Um, you know, and people getting oversensitized, people being offended on behalf of other people when those other people aren't even fucking offended. You know, it's just like, okay, you know, I, I think I've just had enough of that kind of crap. And it's like, okay, I'm out to offend some people, but make you laugh at the same time and really kind of wake people up to the, the bullshit of the world. Um, you know, That's the best. yeah, it, it, it really is because it, it's not, I'm not offending you for the sake of offending you. I'm offending you for the sake of opening your eyes and having a message behind it. Um, yeah. and, and I think that has become kind of like my, my niche, you know, offensive with a purpose. <laughs> <laughs> um, no. Yeah. And, but some of them aren't offensive with a purpose. Some of them are funny for the sake of being funny. <laughs> um, yeah. Like, that's cool. Yeah, so I mean, it, it. I'll I'll see how it works out. Um, once I'm able to start getting back on stage again, but it's 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 scary at the same time. Yeah, yeah, I definitely I agree with that, man. I um, 
I've never really, I only sang in front of a crowd, like a few, like I used to be in a metal band, but that's, that's different because you're screaming, yep. maniac. So I don't, there's a, there, I don't think there's nerves there. I've done, I did do one acoustic show before I got the band going, but there was only a few people there and that wasn't too hard. Uh, doing live streams, I was always like a fucking nervous wreck before I did them. But once you get into it, it you get real comfortable. So I'm hoping that maybe once we do get on stage that I won't be as nervous as usual. Yeah, I mean, I've been in the entertainment business now for 20 years. I mean, I used to be in bands. I used to perform live on stage. Um, I used to be a professional wrestler. I've wrestled in front of thousands of people. You know, I've yeah. done lots of different things for the sake of entertainment, including comedy. Um, but, you know, it's now it's like, okay, I haven't done this in a while. You know, that first time you go back on stage, you know, they're not going to know who you are because I'm, I'm still building my comedy career. You know, I might be 40, but this is something that I'm still building. Um, I'm a little behind the curveball on it because I've only now just gotten the balls to do it. Because um, I've only been doing it for like two and a half years. So it's like, okay, but now at the same time, I, I've started to make a name for myself. I've even had, you know, opportunities on some of these Zoom shows where I got to, uh, you know, open for Jamie Kennedy. You know, oh, shit. yeah. So, I mean, I've, I've had some opportunities that I would have never had before if I was just doing the DC circuit. So, yeah. I, you know, I take a lot of pride in that. Um, but at the same time, it's like, okay, that first time I get up on stage, what's it going to feel like? I, I did a, a really um, small show back in like July when there was hope and there were easing restrictions. Yeah. Um, but it was at a brewery in front of like 15 people and then we live streamed it as well. And again, it was just like, it was only 15 people in the, in the crowd. They were talking, it was a beer. It was like, I said, it was a brewery. So they weren't always paying attention. So it, it just felt wrong. Yeah. So now I'm just like, okay, when I step in front of a real crowd at a, at another comedy club, like DC improv or something like that, what's going to, what's it going to be like? Yeah. So it, it's, it's. It's definitely still a crazy time. It is. Um, but hopefully, you know, with everything that's, you know, we're getting some sense of normal ability, normal, normal ability. Is that a word? Yeah. A think, sense of yeah. normal ability. Yeah, I guess it's right. Uh, <laughs> normalism, whatever. Um, you know, things should start going slowly back. Um, you know, even though like we were, we lifted the mask mandate here last week, um, people are still wearing them. You know, so because people are, yeah, absolutely. Thumbs up to you guys. Because, you know, the even our governor was like, hey, you don't have to wear them anymore, but if you're not vaccinated, please wear one. You know, there's, <laughs> you know, no, more, than, more than ours did. I so. know what yours did. He was just like, fuck you guys, we're done. Um, he just, yeah. This is also the same governor that's getting ready to sign a fucking bill into a law that says you don't have to have a fucking permit to carry a gun with no background check either. But, you know, I digress. Um, uh, yeah. Um, there's also another one that got signed yesterday. Uh, with the abortion bill. Yep. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I mean, uh, that's, that's just Texas. Um, good luck to you, bud. <laughs> I mean, this is also the same state that a couple, like back when the mask mandate first came off, one of the restaurants, I think it was down in San Antonio or further south. I can't remember. Um, they were still man. They were still like, "Hey, you have to have masks on in here." People freaked out and they're like, "Oh, you're just trying to hide from immigration." <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, I don't think I. Oh, you know what? Yeah, I, I remember that. I it was something. A lot, it, it might not have been exactly like that, but that's pretty much how it went down. Yeah. yeah, I remember something like that. Just yeah. <sighs> it was funny because whenever he. That was like a week or two after the winter storm. Yeah. It was fucking should worry about that shit rather than, I don't know. It's fucking, it's ridiculous. No, man. Yeah, y'all weren't worried about that because it was, it was fake. It was sent from Bill Gates and it wasn't even real snow. <laughs> I've never heard that one. You didn't hear that one? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, definitely was not fake. It was real, man. It was terrible. No, people were... <laughs> Make, I had as much time as I could. People were making snowballs and going outside and trying to light them on fire, and they weren't melting. And they're like, "See, it's not real snow. This is fake." 
That is fucking insane. That is the stupidest shit. Yeah, I know. Yeah, but oh. not when, when uh, whenever he lifted the mandate, he also said, oh, and, you know, businesses can open up. The state can open is, is now open. Everybody can open up 100%. In my head, I was like, oh, I thought we already were, man. Because yeah, everything, can. aside from, like, wearing a mask indoors, everything seemed pretty fucking normal to me. Yeah, because, yeah, because they're... Your your state is so fucking red. They didn't believe it was a thing to begin with. <laughs> <sighs> this country's just completely gone to shit. Yeah, yeah. But we 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 try. <laughs> <laughs> try to do what? Try to make the 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 nightly news every night with the stupid shit that the rest of the state does. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> How little... can we get on the news today? Right. Let's go ahead and make guns just legal across the board. You don't even need a background check. Fuck you guys. <laughs> that, 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 that's fucking insane. That one right there caught me off guard. I had knew the abortion bill was coming because I've been hearing that for a while, but the gun one yeah. caught me by surprise. I was like, oh, ugh, that's bad. Yeah. It's like, yeah, sure, a criminal can get a gun no matter what, but still, like, yeah. This is making it easier. Right, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, especially in Texas. I mean, you just cross the border and get one illegally, and, you know, however you guys, however they do it, not you guys, however they do it. <laughs> um, so, I mean, it, it's, yeah. Uh, but now it's just like, oh, I don't even need that shit anymore. Now I can just go get one. Fuck it. Uh, welcome to America. <laughs> the land of the free and the land of everyone fucking carrying a gun without a background check. Sweet. Yep. So I guess now we're just now we're completely free. I don't know about all that. Apparently, that's that's what they're trying to do. <laughs> <laughs> this is America. If we were free, I wouldn't be worrying about paying my rent. facts and i haven't even man i haven't even well actually so we started in san antonio we're in austin now oh, okay cool still, still kind of consider us a san antonio band but so we've just been here for not even maybe eight months or so and they tried to rent, raise the rent on us about like 140 dollars already holy shit yeah that's a big jump not even being here a whole year man it's crazy yeah because everyone's missing out on money, so they're like, oh, let's just go ahead and pawn it off on everybody else. I mean, some people really were hurting during this time, and there was a lot of good things that the government did, but there was a lot of shitty things the government did, too. Yeah. So, but again, I'm hoping that you guys and everyone listening at home is really starting to get that, again, that sense of normability, you know. Hopefully your, you know, your checking account is starting to see cash flow again. Maybe you're starting to rebuild your savings. You know, hopefully, you know, you know, I know you said you're worrying about paying rent, but I hope that that changes in the next few months. You know, I hope, you know, because there's a lot of struggling musicians out there. There's a lot of struggling entertainers out there. There's a lot of struggling people out there, you know, including our former fucking, you know, military veterans and shit like that. That are, you know, and that's a sad, that's one of the saddest fucking things, but I won't yep. go there today. Um, but there is a light at the end of the tunnel and I just hope, you know, with all everything else that's still going on, you know, music and comedy and movies come back stronger than ever because we need that as a society. Yeah, you know, you know, we love to argue about this movie or how good this was or what the favorite band is or no, that band sucks or whatever the case might be. We love that <laughs> shit. But yeah. when we're arguing about that shit, we're not arguing about fucking, you know, who are why our governor sucks or why our fucking government sucks or I hate you because you wear a fucking I love Donald Trump shirt. We're not talking about that. We're talking about stupid, menial shit like mu music and movies. Oh, yeah. And I miss that. And I, I can't wait till we see that piece of the puzzle again. Because I've said this before. One of the coolest things I've seen in life 
and I'm sure you can uh, you can attest to this as a music fan, not not so much a musician, but a music fan. When you go to a festival or when you go to a concert, you know as well as I do, there's always racist bigots in the fucking the crowd with you. Always. But when that band is up on stage, none of that matters. You know what I'm saying? We're still a f- now. As soon as they leave, they're assholes. Because how often do you do you see a, you know something you know hate fuel that at a fucking concert or at least a metal show? Very rarely. Um, but during that time, the music's playing. We're all family because we're all there for that one sole purpose. And I, and I do miss that sense of community. Now, I don't hang out with those people, obviously. But at the same time, you know, during that moment in time, I don't know that because they're not expressing that. So if I'm standing somebody next to somebody who's just enjoying the music, I'm standing next to somebody who's enjoying the music. And I again now, but now that that's gone, we're seeing more people ex, you know express who they are and the hate that they have and everything else like that. Now we're we're more hate filled than we ever have been before. And I honestly think that that part of that is because we don't have our normal sources of entertainment, our outlets, our things that we have lost over the last year. But hopefully, once that all comes back full force, and the first time we go to a concert and be like, oh my god, we're all fucking humans again. Yeah. I'm hoping yeah, I, that I, I happens. Do, I do miss that, man. Experiencing, like, a song with a random fucking person, that, that's always a good feeling. It really is. It really fucking is. Like, yeah, that's the, one of the greatest things ever. You might not know who they are. They might be the biggest asshole outside of that concert. But in that moment, they're just a music fan just like you and they're appreciating you being there with them and everything else like that. So once we can get back to that, hopefully we'll start seeing some positive changes in this country from humans, not government, not government officials. I'm talking the humans that live next door to us. Normal, regular people, normal, regular people. Now I wouldn't now, now all of us are normal, regular people, but uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm a little on the odd side, but you know, I'm still a normal, regular person. <laughs> I definitely wouldn't consider myself normal either. So no, <laughs> If you're normal, that being normal nowadays is weird. Yeah. <laughs> you're the oddball out if you're the normal one. <laughs> Almost being weird is now normal, which is now even weirder. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You're right about that. Um, but yeah, you yeah, know, I miss going to the movies, man. I've been in, I've been to the movies twice. The first time I went, it was weird because it was nobody there, which was kind of great because you know sit wherever you want second time i went was cool because there was actually a lot of people there and stuff so So that was nice for me i i'm only one of the guys that goes in the movies theater for something i'm a fan like a fandom of so like i'm a big you know star wars guy i'm a big marvel guy if you couldn't tell um so the last time i went to the movie theater was two years ago for spider-man far from home oh shit okay okay um and in July, when the new Black Widow movie comes out, I might be at the movie theater, uh, but I might just do the Disney Plus thing too because they're gonna—it's gonna be yeah. going on Disney Plus as yeah. well. But at the same time, I'm probably gonna be at that fucking movie theater. But well, guess we'll see. Um, it's it's a great experience, man. I, it really I, is. I miss it. Yeah, I saw that Kong movie a few weeks ago or a month ago. Whenever it came out, I was not a fan of it. That's that's why I watched it on HBO Max because that thing was a fucking train wreck. That movie was almost as I mean, not as bad, but like Mortal Kombat was horrible as well. Oh yeah. my god! Yeah. Let me let me say this: when Kano is the best character, <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. Um. And now watching these movies that they've been coming out on HBO Max. It's like, oh, I can see why you're releasing them in HBO Max and theaters the same day. I, I get it. Yeah, they, they should be straight to DVD type movies. <laughs> yeah, the beginning was so badass, and then everything just like, it was, oh, it was terrible. Yeah, and they introduced some character that's not even in the video game. And Oh, yeah. I was yeah, like, that's... What, what the hell is this? I don't. And at the end, they're like, yeah, Johnny Cage. It's just like, fuck you. Yeah, no. I mean, some people liked it. That's cool, but I, I, yeah, it wasn't for me. Nobody I've talked to that's a fucking like a fan of the the or of just fan of movies or the you know the whole series of com you know Mortal Kombat or even like just movie nerds in general. 
said any uh, nobody i know has ever said anything positive about that <laughs> i have not seen one positive comment about that movie at all except for like all oh, the fight scenes were great but they meant nothing <laughs> i don't even remember it, man i fell asleep a bunch of times yeah that's it, it's a it's a good napping movie there you go yeah <laughs> when you want something to go to sleep to at night turn on mortal kombat <laughs> Like man, even the the like the original movie, like the the like all the effects are complete shit, but the acting, like the story, it was it was good, you know. Yeah, but then you can't account for the other ones, like Mortal Kombat, Annihilation, and all the ah, other stuff. That was yeah. horrible stuff. Um, yeah. But the first one was good. Yeah. <laughs> but that's about it. <laughs> um, dude, it's been a lot of fun fucking talking to you. Um, you know, guys. The links for the new music video and the, the to download and stream is down below. Check out Love Again wherever you listen to your fucking music. Watch the video on YouTube. It's a fucking sick-ass video that really kind of immerses you into it. Um, which, lastly, I want to go ahead and say thank you very much for doing an actual music video and not just you know the band sitting in a fucking warehouse and just playing in front of a, a camera. Um Thank you for actually doing a real music video with a story behind it. Um, while uh, yeah, I want to give a shout out to AJ Garces that uh, I think that's how you say his last name. Uh, <laughs> he he came up with the story. He kind of like asked me like what I thought for a story, and I gave him just a little bit of something, and he came up with that whole story. So shout out to him. Yeah, I mean songs like you know songs you know music videos have a place in the world where it's just you know, in a fucking warehouse and just jamming out and having a good fucking time. Yeah. Those, those videos have a fucking place, but if your song has a story and you just do that in the fucking music video, it doesn't help the song at all. But I'm, so I'm glad that you guys did that. So, um, check out the song, check out the music video. It's a fucking wonderful fucking watch. Um, and hopefully in the next couple months or the next year, we can see you guys play and, get more of an idea of who you guys are. Oh yeah, man. Thank you so much for having me on here, dude. It was a pleasure. Not a problem. And for everybody else, thank you so much for being here on this Friday. You guys have a wonderful rest of your weekend. Stay happy, stay healthy. And as always stay fucking heavy. We'll see you guys later. Peace.